JK, really? Chubby on the track. JK, really? Chubby on the track. Right, so we have the front suspension done now. It's all tacked, standing up on its own. Rear suspension is not done, but it's just held up by a jack stand between the swing arm and the cage so that it's, it is standing on its own now. It's actually able to roll. Not well, because we don't have steering hooked up, but suspension works great. I want to start working on the rear after this, and then once we're done with the rear, I can start working on steering so this thing will actually be a roller. 
But because this thing has a bunch of caster angle in it, if you don't know what caster is, it's, I'll put up a diagram here. It's where the pivot of your wheel is angled back a little bit so that when you roll forward, your wheels naturally want to align themselves going forward. Just like on, on like a shopping car, how the wheels are behind the pivot point. So when you push forward, the wheels align themselves. Same kind of situation goes on with this. The pivot is angled backwards. As it goes forward, the wheels naturally want to align themselves forward. When you roll it backwards, they just screw themselves up. So because we have a bunch of caster, I think I can roll this thing outside. We can really get a good look at it, compare it, measure it, put up a car next to it, maybe see how big it is, everything like that. I, I just want to get it out the doors, basically. It's been sitting in here for like nine months, and I, except for the thumbnail picture I took for part two. I want to get it outside, but so let's see if we can roll it outside and then get some pictures. I apologize in advance for the wind, but this thing is finally outside on its own, standing up. Kind of. I'm kind of cheating. It doesn't have steering or rear suspension, but it does stand up. It looks gigantic in the garage, and it is gigantic. Like, don't get me wrong, this thing is just under 10 feet long and just under 5 feet wide. It's huge, but it doesn't look as big outside, especially compared to my car over there. You, you can't see that. But even my little car, it's a Honda Civic, looks pretty gigantic compared to this thing. This thing is actually slightly taller than my car, though, because I'm huge, and I gotta have it at least big enough that I can clear it and not you know, get a concussion every time I hit a little bump. Honestly, I don't really know what the point of rolling it out here was, but it's cool, so now we can roll it back in, and I'm going to try to get the rear suspension done. All right, now that we have the front suspension done, it's time to start focusing on the rear. Now, I had an interesting plan for the rear, and that is these. I have four motorcycle fork tubes. Two of them are from the XL500S, and these two are from a Chinese Maxfine 150. These are stronger than these. They're very heavy. I was planning on taking two of these on each side, one big one and one small one on each side, overlapping each other as the rear suspension, which I think would work. It would be not ideal, but it would work. But then recently I discovered this amazing motorcycle scrapyard thing near my house. So I've decided I want to go there and see if I can find some like big, nice coilovers that I can use for the rear of this instead of using these things. So um, this is like kind of what Chris did on the GS500, if you haven't seen that, I'll just link his video right up in the corner. But he used some shocks, like some coilovers and two fork springs because the, uh, the coilovers that he had were not strong enough to hold up his entire buggy. So he put the springs on and then some fork tubes over it in order to get that strength, which I could do if, if I get some coilovers and they turn out to not be strong enough to hold this up. This thing is very heavy. But I'm hoping since it's like this gigantic yard with like so much freaking stuff, I'm hoping that I can find some shocks that will be strong enough to hold up the rear of this buggy and give me the suspension travel that I want, which is around seven inches rear suspension travel. That's about as much as I can get before like the engine starts being a problem with the seat and the swing arm coming up close to this thing. So I just don't want to use these basically because it's just inconvenient to try to mount them and everything. Plus they don't have the greatest like absorption. So the rebound is really, really fast. So just decided kind of against using these and I'm going to go look for some coilovers instead. And if I have to, I'll use some of these as well as the coilovers. So let's go to this place that I found. I'm not really sure what to expect, but it's just this giant motorcycle scrapyard. Let's see if we can find some. One hour later. How I get inside this is it. Shocks themselves are through that door. Just make a turn. This place is ridiculous. Here's some shocks. Here's a whole heck of a lot more shocks. Look a bit weak. This is holding up the rear. So I want something that's either long with lots of travel and like medium stiffness or shorter and pretty heavy stiffness. Because mm. I need like seven inches of suspension travel in the rear. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm.
I'm back from the scrap yard and this is what I got. Two motorcycle coilovers, they're pretty dang stiff, like my dad's 180 pounds and he can barely compress them. They do compress though, so I know they're not like frozen. They had a little piece of tape on them that says 787, so it's off of 87 something 700, I don't know what. Got a bunch of random characters up here. I'll put a picture of it and see if any of you guys can decipher what that means, I don't know. 700 something, 700s are heavy, so I'm assuming these are gonna be pretty dang strong. So what I need to do is measure exactly how much suspension travel these have. So I'm thinking it looks like it's around two and a half, three inches of suspension travel, and then I need to put this in the exact right spot on here. It'll be kind of like, like, like that, I'm thinking. And then I'll put a little bar up here to hold them. But I just need to put them in the exact right spot so that it, I get exactly seven inches of suspension travel at the wheels when these are fully compressed. And I'm just hoping it'll be strong enough. They are adjustable, they're at their stiffest setting right now. I don't know how to adjust them. It looks like you need a special tool to like turn all these holes, but it's marked as adjustable, so there's probably some way to adjust them. But since the front suspension's done, so now I just need to do all those measurements, figure out exactly where I need to put these, and then make some sort of mount for them. So let's go working on that. Meanwhile, all right, so another issue we have is that this bar is actually crooked compared to this one. From this angle that I have the camera set at right now, you can definitely tell this bar is crooked and leans down this way. So I'm honestly not entirely sure how this happened because I did have to extend this up. You can see these two things right here because I messed up on cutting it or something and it was just too short. But both of these ex extensions are the exact same length. So I'm not entirely sure how this side ended up so much lower than this side. But everything's just tacked together, so I just need to cut these off and put a longer extension on this side. Finally standing up completely on its own, unsupported, on all of its own shocks, everything. It's standing up. Now, something I want to point out, we just installed the rear shocks, right? Um, they're a little on the soft side. They would work, but they're pretty soft. Like, just the weight of me getting on it, like... <laughs> Now, the front works great. The front is like perfect. The rear, it's a little soft. It would work, I think. It's just a little soft for my liking. Go over a big bump or something, I feel like it's just going to be bottoming out and it also doesn't ride as high as I wanted it to because it just kind of sinks. So, I kind of knew this would happen when I bought these motorcycle coilovers. They were the thickest ones I could find besides like the gigantic ATV ones. Um, I think my solution to this is just is to just take these two coilovers that I have. They're a lot smaller. They're from the rear of the GS550 that I pulled the engine from. Uh, they're both pretty light. They're they're not very stiff. They're pretty weak. So my plan is to just put these about like that, if you can see that, just to kind of stiffen up the rear a little bit. Not too much, but they'll stiffen it up enough where it holds itself up more where I like it to and doesn't bottom out after every pebble. But I've been really busy with trying to get credits for my classes with school, so I haven't been able to work on this thing that often. 
and it's been almost a month since the last video already, and I'm going to try to get a video out every other week. I don't know how well that's going to work, but from here on out, I'm going to try because now I have summer. So next video, we're going to be installing these on the rear to see if those stiffen it up, help it out a little bit. Also going to try to mount the seat, and we'll work on steering. Get a steering, get a complete rolling chassis. Um, that's going to be pretty sweet. So that's all for next video. Uh, it's, what time? It's like 11.30 at night. I should probably go inside. So in part five, we'll just do all the things that I just mentioned. But for now, I got to end this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part five.